All right. Hey, it is great to have Kevin Schaefer here. And uh, we get, we have the privilege of working together uh, just about every single day and uh, working in our advancement office here. Uh, but you also have some great stories. I have some great stories. A lot of them. We, our, all of our guys here in the production side of things, they've been very excited because they, they thought, you know, there's a pretty good chance the wheels fall off on this one. Like, you know. Yeah, I asked them, I said, do you ever cut out anything? And they said, not normally, but you might be the first one. So <laughs> we'll see. So we'll see. All right. So, hey, let, let's let's jump in. Um, we are going to get to the whole NFL story. I know that, that that's like a that's a huge part of your story. Um, I would love for us to start a little bit earlier, if, if that's possible. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I would love to hear, uh, I know you, you started out in Pennsylvania. I'd love to hear a little bit about the childhood, um, particularly with the impact. Because I've always been super impressed with you, Kev, that uh, very clearly the foundation that your parents established spiritually has been something that has really laid the framework for your life. And uh, I'm always really intrigued, even though we joke a lot, and, and, and I'm always just intrigued with, the, with your faith and uh, the fact that you take it very seriously, that it's something that's important to you. Um, so walk me through kind of the beginnings uh, of, of what childhood looked like, you know, how mom and dad were impacting the world. Yeah, so uh, we moved around quite a bit uh, growing up. Um, actually, I was born in Salisbury, Maryland. My dad was a, uh, a radio uh, he was on the radio. I always told him he had a great face for radio, but uh, he was he was a radio news anchor, or whatever. He had a little bit of time on on air as well. Huh. But um, just born in Salisbury, kind of Ocean City, Maryland, around that area, and then pretty quickly we moved to Florida, uh, kind of near Tampa, Brandon, Florida. Uh, my granddad lived out there, and my dad ended up getting a job with him. I think he realized that you know having a family. I had one older brother, uh, probably wasn't gonna do it in the radio business. So he ended up working for my granddad for a little bit in the tax uh, accounting side mm -hmm. and uh, lived there for four years. Um, you know, I started sports there and I remember playing. Um, is that where IMG is? In yeah, yeah, it I actually is. Right. Sar yeah. Sarasota. Yeah. Right. Right. Or Br Bradenton actually. Bradenton. Okay. But uh, lived there for four years. And then uh, my dad, he was working on getting a computer programming job. So he got his degree, and then um, he got his first job in Detroit, Michigan. Oh. So in uh, first grade, no, I guess it was kindergarten, moved out to Detroit, Michigan for one year, wow. lived there for one year. And uh, he was shopping around, and he got transferred um, through EDS, Ross Perot's company, to Dallas, Texas. So we moved to you Dallas. You really did hop around a lot. I yeah. had no idea of that part of the story. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was tough, you know. I mean, just being, of course, I'm kindergarten, first, second grade, but you know, having to make new friends. And, and back at that time, I was quiet. I was kind of a chubby little kid. You know, I was always one of the bigger kids, but one of the chubbier kids, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so then in, uh, after uh, kindergarten, we moved to Dallas, Texas. Lived there for two years. Um, you know, just had a, a real good childhood. You know, of course, you know, outside all the time, playing outside. I remember in Dallas, we'd be, you know, outside as late as we could until our parents dragged us back in and, um, you know, we had dinner every night, you know, they made food for us every night. We had a family dinner and it was just a, you know, really good Christian family. Um, very conservative. My parents are very, very conservative. My dad went to Bob Jones university, which yeah. is very conservative. Yeah, very and conservative. My, his brother went there and his, of course, my grandparents down in Florida, very, um, Christian people go to the Baptist church down there. been there for, you know, 50 years. They're both deceased now, but my, my on that side of the family, but, uh, it was interesting. You know, my grandmother was always kind of the prayer warrior for the family and, um, anything going on, she would just pray, pray, pray. And she was actually very against me, uh, playing football. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. She was afraid I'd get hurt. And my dad, and uh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but my, but my dad would sit down with her and, and say, well, we think we're going to let Kevin play football. And it was like dead silence. Like <laughs> you could just see she wasn't happy about it. <laughs> But um, but no, so I lived there for two years. And then finally, uh, my dad is originally from Pennsylvania. And he said, uh, you know, he wanted to get back to PA uh, eventually. He's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We were okay. big Pirates and Steelers fans. Yeah. And, big uh, football town. Big yeah, sports town, actually. Yeah, it is. So he, he looked around, and there was a, a Ford New Holland had a job opening for a computer programmer. So in third grade, we ended up moving there. So I, I And then from that point, my mom... Worked at a local elementary school, and um, 
you know, she always, I always appreciated this. She always made, they always made the sacrifice. They believed that the mom should be at home, you know, for, yeah. you know, during the childhood anyway. So I, I don't think she started until we were in sixth or seventh grade, probably. And my brother's two years older. Just the two, just the two of you? Just the, the two of okay. us. Yep. Very close family of uh, still, you know, to my brother and my parents, of course. And uh, so we moved to Pennsylvania in third grade, stayed there all the way through, um, graduated from there, and then uh, moved on from there. But uh, just, you know, just the family life, like I said, very conservative. You know, we did devotions at night. Um, you know, we always had dinner together. Uh, you know, we, they came to all my sporting events pretty much every single game that my brother and I had. You know, they were at every single one of them. You know, my dad admitted when I finally started playing football my junior year, he admitted that he would go just to pray in the really? stands. Really? No kidding? <laughs> yeah. Just for safety? Pray for safety, No yeah. kidding. Now, did your brother uh, play ball as well? No, he played baseball. He never got into football. Okay. And, and truthfully, I uh, I mean, I, I was a baseball player from four years old all the way through. I was pretty good. And You uh, thought that was where you were going to go, right? Yeah, that was my dream. I wanted to be a major league baseball player. And oh. I loved it. I, I enjoyed it. And my dad, again, he would take us outside and – He'd take us to the park and hit fly balls to us and throw with us. And he was, I, I don't think he was an all-star baseball player or anything, but he just knew the importance of spending time with his family. Mm -hmm. And and he'd take us out there. We, you know, we we put up a badminton set in our backyard and we you know, he taught us how to play badminton and ping pong and we would keep track of, you know, our badminton wins. And the first couple of years, of course, he beat us about every time. And yeah. And then it finally got to a point there where he never won a game. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I love the fact that he didn't let you in, though, earlier on. That's good. That's one thing yeah. he always said. Yeah, he didn't, didn't let us win. And the other thing, you know, uh, he'd always say, pride cometh before fall. You know, if I start getting a little, you know, anx anxious or anxious or something, you yeah. know, I get excited. Like, oh, man, that was Talk a hard one. And he go, pride cometh before fall. <laughs> you still talk smack, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 and, and I still happen to win most of those. <laughs> you do, that. actually. You do. <laughs> um, now, when you were a kid, like here, here you're growing up in a conservative family. Uh, did you rebel against that? Was that something that, that was like, was did that remain your anchor? What did that look like? Well, you know, it, it was uh, interesting. Um, you know, I, my dad kind of put, he did put a lot of pressure on us as far as, you know, salvation, you know, accepting Christ was the, the your number one uh, thing in life. He, he always said there's two major choices you're going to make. And one is, are you going to, are you going to accept Jesus? And then number two, you know, who you're going to marry. Right. And, uh, you know, at, at that time, like I said, I was a quiet kid and I had a two year, a, a brother, two years older. And, um, I, I never really wanted the limelight. Like I, I kind of believe maybe I asked Jesus in my heart before that, before this day that mm -hmm. I'm getting to when I was 12 years old. But, you know, I, I never really officially felt like I did it. And uh, one Sunday morning, my, my brother came downstairs, and, and I'm sleeping in my bunk bed. And and um, I hear I hear kind of some joy down there, and I'm like, what's going on? So I go down there, and they say, Brian just accepted Jesus in his heart last night, or this uh, I think it was the night before, and and I said really, and immediately I went upstairs, and I had a little, um, you know, my uh, my dad's all into sports autographs too. I know this on a side note, but we would send out letters to different baseball players, old time baseball players, That's and awesome. movie stars. Jimmy Stewart was a no big kidding. one. Roy Rogers was a big one, and and uh, they would sign autographs for us and send them back, and we do it about every three months. <laughs> you know, I'd ask Jimmy Stewart for three autographs, and. He sent me three autographs, and then a few months later, I'd ask him for three more. And no kidding. <laughs> yeah. And then you're selling them on the side? Or? I, I sold them to my dad for about a dollar. <laughs> then he sell, he matched them up, and then he sold them for quite a bit more than a dollar. That's so it was awesome. A good business deal for him. But, yeah. But um, but no, so I Bobby Dorr was an old baseball player, and he always would send out these tracks. Like he would, his signatures, he'd do on a little uh, salvation tract. That's and uh, cool. so I just kind of, I already knew how to do it, but I went upstairs and I read that tract and I laid in bed and I asked Jesus to come to my heart and immediately I felt this warmth come, come over me um, that just, I, I knew that, that it happened, yeah. you know, so, so yeah, so that, then uh, we happened, to, it was church day, I think it was January 6th, uh, 1992, I want to say, I was 12 years old, so, hmm. and um and, uh, yeah, we went to church, and it just happened to be Communion Sunday. It was, we went to a, a Christian church there, and, and uh, you know, they didn't do communion every week. 
but I think they did it probably once a quarter. And for whatever reason, it just happened to be communion Sunday. So, of course, we, you know, took part in communion for the first time. So that's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. So that foundation, I mean, that's 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 still important. Because, I mean, I, I know that you reference it all the time. Did that provide a great foundation for some of the challenges with professional football? Uh, you know, uh, it, not necessarily. I mean, it's it's funny. I mean, you know, a lot of people say in the NFL, it's is is God in the NFL, and and uh, yes, the answer is yes. I mean, we um, you know we there's a chaplain to every team, and uh, it's a Christian chaplain, huh. and he would do a Bible study once a week. That's awesome. Um, then they do chapel um, every Saturday night before the game. There's a chapel. And, uh, I mean, he'd be around the locker room all the time and talking to us and praying for us. And, and then we, we would do, you know, prayer in the shower right before the game. You know, they, whoever, it was voluntary, whoever wanted to come. And, and we would do kind of a popcorn prayer, just different people pray. And, and we would get, you know, half the team there. Okay. I mean, it was pretty crazy. Now it, it was kind of a running joke in Atlanta, um, you know, we had one particular guy that would, he would go there and he would normally be one of the ones to pray and. Then he leave and he go, man, we're gonna go kill these MFers. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, all right, let's let's go kill them. <laughs> but uh, but then you know, then a- after the game, we would have uh, prayer um, in the middle of the field, and and that would be you know, you get a good amount of people. You kind of knew who the Christians were, and and uh, I always just, I mean, I always prayed before the game, just prayer for, prayer of um, uh, you know safety mm-hmm. and and uh power and energy and i had kind of a very specific prayer i did every game which i kind of forget what it was now it's mm-hmm. a while ago but yeah. uh but pow- but you know for power safety and and um and whatever and i always felt like you know i we, us christians had a little edge because we had somebody behind us mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> you know? yeah and the confidence that comes from knowing that you're you're following Christ. You yeah, know? yeah. The only time it was a little weird is uh, when we're going up against who we know is another Christian. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Like, well, okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, we're gonna get more into the NFL. Let me yeah. let me still press rewind a little bit. You went to Tulsa, so tell me about how that because like so often uh, a lot of the, the the folks that we have listening are a lot of our students here and and students elsewhere, uh, and I'll get emails from you know people telling their story about how does this happen or how does it, you know, so, I mean, you get recruited from Tulsa, I'm gathering for the NFL, but how do you even get to, to Tulsa? Did you go there on a full, on a, on a football scholarship? Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I, like I said, I played baseball all the way through and then my, uh, sophomore year, I, I, I was just in the weight room all the time and the weight room guys, they started saying, you know, why don't you start doing the football workout? Let's you seriously see. didn't play football before yeah, sophomore I'd year. Never played midgets no or never played minors way. or anything. It was, pretty unbelievable but uh you know I, I was only probably 220 back then and but I was a strong kid very athletic and um you know just had a lot of future to me you know potential to me basically and and um so yeah my sophomore year I kind of started that football workout and then immediately I kind of be, started becoming one of the strongest guys in the school uh so my junior year you know my uh my coach is like you know why don't you know, why don't you play football? And I said, well, my parents won't let me. And he's like, well, why don't you bring him in? And uh, we'll talk no kidding, to him. No kidding, he had him and, come in. Yeah. And, I and like it. Talk it's to full court press, yeah. Yeah, so they came in, we met, and, um, and you know, my, my parents are kind of coming around, and they're like, what number would he be? And he's like, well, we got the 70s open. And my dad's like, well, seven, that's, you know, that's a God number seven. That's, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and then uh, and then he kind of said, well, you know what, who am I to stop? Kevin, to, uh, he, he 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 said, you know, he might one day go to the NFL, and who am I to stop that? Your dad said, said that. Yeah, he, no way. <laughs> he kind of foresaw that, you know, potential. So, so yeah, then they said, okay, well, if you want to play, you can play. And that's when they had to talk with my grandparents and yeah. with dead silence in the room. <laughs> no kidding. It's, it's funny because I, when I was, when I was, you know, here we relate together differently, you know, each and every day. Yeah. So when I was researching this and just seeing – there was a lot of comments about your hand-eye coordination that apparently that was like kind of your, your sweet spot, I guess. Right. Yeah. You probably picked that up from baseball a lot. Yeah. A lot from baseball. And then just like I said, badminton, I mean, growing up playing badminton, yeah. ping, ping pong, I was right. really good at ping pong and just pretty much it, you know, it, it, I mean, every sport, I, we just played every sport. Yeah. We'd out, like I said, growing up in Dallas and, Pennsylvania, we were outside every single day. We yeah. play with the neighborhood kids, play wiffle ball. I mean, just, gifted athletes are just gifted athletes too. I mean, it, it is kind of wild how that happens. You know, it, it is it is crazy how you know there's 
a- athletic people are, af- a- yeah. are athletic. It's like God know? just put you there for it, you yeah. know. So how did you get to that college? So, so yeah, so like then uh, my senior year, you know, I was not real heavily recruited because I only played for two years. My first year, I ended up um, only starting like towards the end of the year, okay. kind of the second half of the year. So then my senior year, I'm elected captain and, uh, you know, I'm one of the, you know, the strongest kid in the school and are one of the strongest kids in the school. And and then, uh, you know, I started getting the, the calls from different uh, schools and, you know, it was interesting. Most of the schools that were recruiting me were like w- division one double a schools which mm-hmm. are now fcs and um and they were all around the area and of course i said to myself i said well i've you know i've been in pennsylvania for the last you know 10 years i said i would love to get outside the area a little okay. bit um and then tulsa came around and honestly i didn't know where tulsa was You're right it's in oklahoma right. and, uh, <laughs> most people don't know where it is and they're like oh, i'm in arizona i'm like yeah <laughs> somewhere out there and, but uh but then i so I went on a visit and um, I, I just enjoyed the visit. It was a completely different type of area. Like Pennsylvania is older. Right. It's in the Amish country. Right. And right. There's horse and buggies everywhere and uh, it's cold, you know. And then I, I got to Tulsa and it just seemed like an up and coming area. New, yeah. new buildings, new houses and, um, you know, good maintained and, and it was warmer. And yeah. And all this, and I thought, you know what? I said, if I don't experience the Midwest now, I probably never will in my yeah, life. Yeah. I mean, when am I going to go out to Oklahoma ever? So I said, you know what? I'm going to commit here. So I went in and committed there, and you know, it was another interesting thing. Uh, something that was uh, were more, they D one? They were Division yeah, one. That's Division, that's they're same as Georgia, but yeah. not near as good. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but same level, and it was a full scholarship. And I told my parents they had to pay like it was like forty dollars a semester, and they're like, "Oh, I guess we can pay that for you, Kevin." <laughs> forty dollars a semester, <laughs> and uh, but I get to Tulsa, and, and we we did like the very entrance um, uh, physical physical examination. At, it was at the doctor's office, and I remember hearing my offensive line coach. He went to uh, Penn State from Pennsylvania. He recruited very heavily out of PA, so he, he always had a couple linemen every year from PA. And he was talking to the toward the head trainer, and he he kind of pointed at me and said, "Yeah, we took a chance on this guy. He's he's a little smaller, but real athletic, and you know we'll just see what he does." And it was kind of a big motivate motivating point for me because no, I was like, "Okay, well I'm going to show you what I can do." Yeah. Now, had you already hit your growth spurt at that point in time? No, I I my senior year was two fifty six five two fifty, and. Um, so I mean, senior year from high school or for yeah, co- from senior year college senior year from high school, which is nothing these okay. days. I mean. You know, you're, you got to be 280 or more 300 to go to go to D1 these so days. So 6'5", 250, and that was that yeah. would be small in today's day. Yeah, 6'5", 250. I mean, the height was good, but the 250 is, is lean. Yeah. You know, and, um, and I think I bulked up. By the time I got there, I was closer to 270 probably. Okay. But, yeah, it was definitely small. Wow, no kidding. <laughs> now, uh, so you go through Tulsa. Are you, did you, when did you earn a starting position? Yeah, so my first year, I, I actually played a little bit. I, I didn't start, but um, most guys, you know, they go and redshirt the first year. Right, the whole and, first year, yeah. And then, um, then they have four more years, so five total. Um, but, you know, I did not redshirt, so I only had four years total. And um, I played a little bit. I mean, I the the guy, the starter in front of me at the left tackle position, he was, um, you know, we thought he was destined for the NFL, and he did. He ended up going and getting um, – as an undrafted free agent, he had opportunities there, but good player. And, um, but they put me in quite a bit for whatever reason. I don't know why they put me in, but they did. And I made the second team role. And really, you know, it, it was when I came in, I was really third string mm-hmm. and I was behind a guy that was, you know, been there a few years. And I tell you, the one thing I think set me apart was just from drill to drill, you know, you're running from, you know, the 10 yard line down to the other end zone and then over here and, uh, in different drills and I would just I'd just run to the drill you know and, and I'd be the first one there and they're like man Schaefer I mean he is running he wants this thing and you know I if me and the other guy were equal I'm taking it serious right and right he's part, walking over yeah and and you're it, running over and part of the reason is in high school we had this maniac offensive line coach I mean he was just a, a real short skinny guy but he made us run up hills and run all over the place and it was you know just grueling and for an offensive lineman mm-hmm. so I, that's just kind of how I was conditioned so I'd run to the drill and I lead the pack and 
And uh, I think that's really what got me in there. So then they, they said, well, we're going to make the switch. We're going to put you a second string. No kidding. And move him down to third string. And, and he, that was your first year? And that was my first year. No. Yeah, so, I mean, still, second string is not yeah, starting or anything. But never started. But, you know, I played, you know, some. They always put me in. And and um, that, that left tackle got hurt at one time. So I played quite a bit more in a couple games. But, um, you know, Tulsa, we, you know, I – it was it was funny, you know. When I accepted there, I really had no idea how they did, and um, I heard they were like two and two and nine and mm-hmm. three and eight the last several years. And I think that first year we went like two and nine. Yeah, <laughs> we started off two and zero, oh and uh, I remember my parents were like, uh, "Man, I mean, so they could go to a bowl game." And, <laughs> and then we lost the next nine. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. Now your junior senior year, things things liven up for you. You, then you take a starting position there. Yeah. So again, another another weird uh, story. After my first year, they there was a some kind of publication. It was some kind of magazine for, from Tulsa. It wasn't from the school, but just from the city. And um, it said something about it. It brought up Kevin Schaefer, and it it said, you know, he has the potential to be one of the best left tackles ever out of Tulsa. And I'm thinking, what are they talking about? I, I mean, I played very sparingly, but. Again, another motivating thing. I mean, that it was yeah. early on, and I, again, I have no idea who wrote that or why they wrote it, but um, it was pretty cool to read that after my first year. Yeah. So then my second year, so now I'm the starter, a starting left tackle, and um, and just kind of, you know, kept that role uh, all the way through. The, the head coach got fired. The whole coaching staff got fired after that second year. So wow. a new staff comes in. A lot of times new staff will get their own guys, and they did. They, they got some new guys that they really believed in, but – um, like the very first practice, he, the the O line coach was like Schaefer, that's your spot, man, go take it. So I went up, took left tackle spot, and stayed there. And and you know, eventually, probably my junior year, I started thinking that you know I might have potential to play in the NFL. No kidding, okay, that was my next question. When yeah. does it click to you that I yeah. could actually pursue this? Because I mean, a lot of guys play college ball, yeah, and not a lot of guys go on to go on to NFL. Yeah, and um, it was um, I. I talked to my offense line coach at some point there when I kind of realized it. And I told him, I said, you know, when I'm in there in the weight room doing, you know, tricep push down stuff, I'm thinking, man, NFL. And I'm thinking of, you know, I'm doing it um, with my eyes on the NFL. And he, and he goes, well, I wish you would have your eyes on San Jose State and Fresno <laughs> State and Colorado State. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I, of course I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, when does, so when does recruitment start? For you as you're getting as you're pondering the NFL and then now you you're taking it seriously like how, how does that work well you start getting calls from agents that's um, really the first thing that happens okay. and it's uh, was like my ju- after my junior year so into my senior year I start getting calls from agents and, and that kind of you know bases where you're where you're at what kind of agents call you and I had a couple agents that were really after me and um, I I can't remember if it was doing during my junior or senior year or after, I, I'm i kind of fuzzy on the details of what time that was. But, um, you know, senior season went by and gave up no sacks. I had a good year. Mm. Um, the team was not good. You mm. know, we were one in 10 or wow. two, two in 10, I think. And and it was funny. Uh, I was joking around that, uh, the, you know, the uh, I was the offensive MVP. <laughs> and the defensive MVP <laughs> was a D lineman. Oh, my gosh. So, Typically, if, if you think about a team that may not be very good, then their offensive line and defensive line, if they're the MVPs, then that's probably not a great thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I ended, so the season was senior year was great for, you know, personally for me and um, just had a good college experience. And then, yeah, the, started getting the calls from the agents. And I met with him on, uh, right around Christmas time. We went down and um, we met both agents and, Ultimately, I decided to go with this one guy who was a little bit older, but just a great dude. And uh, from Manhattan, his office out in Manhattan, and he had he had several agents under him. And what really intrigued me was he he knew all these um, owners and head coaches, and and he'd call them right in front of me. He'd be like, "Yeah, let me call the owner of the Texans right now," and he'd call him up, and and just an older, smooth talker, and. Uh, guy and I still am friends with them today. You I, know, really? I still talk to them. And did your parents help you make that decision, or is that something you're doing? Yep, my parents were with me. Okay, um, that time and yeah, they came and uh, yeah, my dad actually, you know, going back just to my visit, my official visit to Tulsa, he was with me there too. That's awesome. Uh, did got, they come out to a lot of your games out there? 
yeah, so, uh, you know, like I said, my dad was a computer programmer in Pennsylvania. Well, he ended up um, quitting his job, and they moved to Tulsa. Oh, did they really? <laughs> yeah, when, I think it was my second year they moved to Tulsa because, because they were like, well, we just don't want to miss any games or miss the games. And so he still did computer programming, but he did it as a consultant. Um, Good and for he him. found a couple of different companies, and, and I'd go out and eat with them like once a week or so, and, you know, they come to all the games, and that was probably my second or third year. I think, and um, yeah, and then and then all, and then after I got drafted, they ended up moving to Georgia. Okay. <laughs> you know? but it was towards the end of my my career here in in Atlanta. Okay, so you pick but, up this agent, and what does the process look like from there? Combines. Well, so he sends you to training, and we went. I went to New Jersey, and uh, there's a facility out there, and um, I was still in my second semester. I was still in school because it was my fourth year. A lot of guys, you know, if it's their fifth year. That second semester is kind of a wash. So they go out and they spend two months at the training facility. But I went, I think I spent two weeks there um, because I was still in, it kind of was kind of a Christmas break and then the next week or whatever. And, uh, you know, you you want to you want to get invited to the Combine and you want to get invited to the All-Star Games. And I, I did not. I didn't get invited to either one. And it, and it, it was a little frustrating because I th- I thought I I deserved it in some regard, but on the same sense, our team was one in ten, so um, I don't think that helped very much. Mm-hmm. So uh, so then you're preparing for pro days, and um, so we we set a date for a pro day at Tulsa where we invite you know NFL teams, and we ended up getting like 22 of the teams came, which was really good. Um, and uh, I killed it. I mean, I did really well. And, and combine is, it's kind of you know, it's, it's it's not a real test of you know a football player or an athlete because it's very specific tests. It's you run the forty yard. How fast can you run the forty? How many times can you bench two hundred twenty five pounds? Then they have a couple other drills. How how high can you jump? How, how what's your broad jump? What's your high jump? And um, a couple other little things. And but it's it's not really relate to on the field, right, sure. of course, or, or too much strength. I mean, what people do is they just train for the 225 right. bench, bench test and they train for the 40, which a lineman is not going to run 40 yards ever, right? <laughs> you know. So um, so we had the pro day and had like 22 teams come and and, and uh, did really well. Like I said, I, I ended up doing 33 for 225, did 33 times, which was would have been the top five had I gone to the combine. My 40 was – I ran a 5.03 40, mm. which would have been in the top five for tackles. Um, and some of the other runs, I my my vertical was 31 and a half inches, which was really good. And my broad jump was, was uh, I you know, I quoted this. I, I told Coach Guess I did 10 foot six, but I but then I saw some of the numbers uh, come out this year, so I'm not sure I did 10 foot six. <laughs> it might have been nine foot six okay. or eight foot six okay. for that matter. But we'll we'll go with 10 six so for now. Okay. <laughs> But uh, which would have been really good. So, yeah, so then I, I remember I was joking around quite a bit with one of the guys because I'm, you know, my dad had a, had a really good sense of humor. And so my dad, my brother, and I, we would just joke around yeah, you're all the always time. Joking around. Yeah. After the time of, you know, where, where we get disciplined all the time, you know, in ninth or 10th grade and 11th or 12th grade, we became buddies, yeah. my dad and I. And, uh, and we joke around all the time. So I was just joking with this guy and I, I, I didn't even realize who he was. He was an older uh, scout from Atlanta. And I hadn't heard that Atlanta was recruiting me at all. I did hear some other teams, um, but I was just joking with them, having a good time, and, and as I'm running the forty and stuff like that, and and um, and yeah, so I'm training for the I'm training for it, and you know, draft day comes, and you know, the first day of draft day is, is rounds one, two, and three, and and I didn't have a I, I was kind of projected like fourth or fourth or, or you know fourth or fifth or later, so I wasn't really expecting anything on the first day and of course I didn't get anything on the first day and coincidentally one of uh, the guys I trained with who I thought I was ahead of I mean he ended up getting drafted third round Mm. but he went to one of the all-star games and he got the exposure there and that's kind of what got it and uh, you know so then um, the second day you know I'm kind of getting ready um, and hoping to get drafted you know fifth round comes around and I start getting phone calls from teams and I remember the Texans called and a uh, few other teams call and, and they're like, you know, we want you, you know, how you feeling and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, we get to the seventh round, still not drafted. And then I start getting phone calls. Basically it's, it's called free agency phone calls because they only have seven picks, but then they always pick about 15 more guys after okay. that. 
and they give them a signing, you know, two thousand dollar signing bonus to come out, and they're there, you know, you're there all summer until the the first cut, uh, which is you know when the preseason games start in August. So, you know, I, I start getting calls saying, you know, they're telling telling me where I'd be on the depth chart, and that you know there's not that many tackles, and I have an opportunity, and and then uh, I get a call from Atlanta, and it's from um, a guy named Dennis Allen, and he's currently the head coach at New Orleans right now, but he. He was with me at Tulsa my last two years, and okay. he was kind of a buddy of mine at Tulsa. He was a coach. Yeah. He was a defensive backs coach, and he had just made the jump kind of in that offseason um, when I was training for the uh, for the NFL. He made the jump, and he became kind of a lower-level coach at, in Atlanta. Nice. And uh, he calls. He's like, what's up, Shave, man? How you feeling? How you doing? I said, man, I feel great. And he's like, uh, man, uh, you ready? I said, yeah, I'm, of course I'm ready. I mean, what are you talking about? And He's like, hey, uh, got the offensive line coach. He wants to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, well, this is weird. So he comes on, and, and he's like, hey, Shafe, man, we're really excited for you. We can't wait for you to get here. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. you know. And then he's like, hey, Coach Reeves wants to talk to you. So he gives it to Dan Reeves. No way. And, and Dan's like, well, Kevin, we're real excited for you. And we can't wait for you to get here. And I'm like, okay. He's like, well, let me talk. Let you talk to Coach Allen again. And puts it back to Coach Dennis Allen and – uh and uh, I'm like, Coach, did you guys pick me or something? He's like, yeah, yeah, we picked you. We, we put it in about five minutes ago. And, of course, we're watching the TV screen, and it, it, they're delayed. It was delayed. <laughs> five minutes. I said, well, that's great. And that's amazing. So I put my Atlanta hat on, which I happen to have one, fortunately. Yep. And, uh, and uh, yeah, made my way to Atlanta. So That is awesome. That is that's awesome. That's kind of how draft day went. That is cool. So. I, I I love watching Combine every year. And, honestly, it's always the big guys that I love watching because you see these – freaks of nature you know like six seven two eighty five two and yet they're running faster than any running back in high school you know yeah. like like yeah. it's just it's just amazing to watch these guys who were just put on this earth to do that yeah. you know um yeah it's just it's just remarkable yeah, so different. so when you sign for atlanta are you gone like do you leave right then yeah so that weekend there they say okay well we, you got to come up for a rookie mini camp okay and it's a three-day weekend and so i you know i had to fly up there immediately and and um you know, it was um, interesting timing. I, you know, it, I, I had a girlfriend at the time, and and I, we went to her church, and and right before that, um, they asked me to do like a little skit, you know, and and I had to act like I died during the skit. So I'm I'm standing up, and I kind of fall to my knees, and I I something happens to my knee, like there's a, I feel like a little bone fragment, like oh, no. floating in my knee, and it's just like intense pain, you know, and. And it's it's like when I so when I'm on my knee and I put pressure on my knee is it's like this little bone fragment that's in my knee, and uh, so anyway we go to this you know two weeks later a week later we go to this rookie mini camp and one of the things he has us do is like hitting this bag where we go on our knees and we gotta lean up and hit the bag and it's killing my knee and like it's going numb and it's awful of course you can't say anything no right you just yeah gotta you can't do tell it anyone. <laughs> it was I don't think I've ever told actually I don't think I've ever brought up that story but uh or talked about it you know but uh, was, that's a I just remember how painful it was so the whole mini camp I I don't remember much of it other than my knee hurting so bad <laughs> how did this get turn out did this get turn out pretty this good this get was really good yeah <laughs> I regretted it for a couple of years that's right yeah uh, afterwards. yeah and she didn't turn out to be your wife this girlfriend no no okay no, no, no. all right of course yeah, <laughs> yeah. almost blew the career off there. <laughs> yeah. that's so funny um all right so so you moved to Atlanta um Tell, tell me about how that starts. Because I mean, you you earn. I mean, you were already earning a starting spot that first year, which was pretty remarkable, right? Well, uh, not necessarily. I mean, so so what happened was, um, you know, I'm a seventh round draft pick. So they brought in 22 players that year. They had uh, they uh, had a first, a third. They didn't have a second for whatever. First, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then two sevenths. And I was the second seventh. Okay. Um, and, you know, the final roster is only 53 guys. Right. So right now, going into camp, you have like 90 players. And, you know, every – we we called him the Grim Reaper. You know, he would stand uh, – you'd, you'd walk into the facility, you'd have breakfast, and then you'd take this long hallway to the locker room, and, and the Grim Reaper would be standing right there. No. And he'd say, uh, hey, you know, coach wants to see you, coach wants to see you. And, and uh, you know, so the whole time, I mean, I'm just – you know, I'm just thinking, like, is it my day? Is it, is it oh, my day? Man. And it's it's rough because I'm, you know, I'm going to be number 51, yeah, 52, yeah. 53. And, um, and you know, so the 
we go through a training camp. Training camp goes pretty good. And um, I remember my offensive line coach, he was just crazy. I mean, he would yell and scream, and, you know, we would avoid him. Like, we'd walk by the hallway, kind of turn the other way, put our head <laughs> down. And, he, you know, good coach. I mean, I ended up respecting him and liking him, but he's just a crazy coach, especially to us rookies. Right. You know, so – so um I remember he pulled me in one day after, like, the second week of training camp, and he's like, uh, you know, Shafe, you had to step in there. At, uh, you know, I, they, we were doing goal line. You kind of wait towards towards the end of training camp to do goal line. And um, and they needed an extra tight end. So, they're like, they said, why don't you go play tight, play the second string tight end on this one side because they have two tight ends, you know. So, first mm-hmm. string was on two tight ends. The second string was – number three and four and number four was out that mm-hmm. day or whatever. So I went in and, and, um, I didn't think I did very good. And, uh, he's like, you know, you really turned a lot of heads. A lot of people uh, notice you and, you know, now you got to live up to those shoes. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> so, so then, uh, we go into our first preseason game and there's four preseason games. And the way they worked it is the starters played the first half, second string played the second half and third string never played. They wouldn't get a single snap or anything unless somebody got hurt. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going into the first one. I'm third string right tackle. So I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to play, you know, of course. And so we go into the, so we go into the game and um, it was against the Dallas Cowboys. I remember the Dallas football, you know, American Cowboys, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know, the starter plays the first half and the second half, the second string guy goes in and on the second play, he falls on his knee and, and sprains his knee, and he's out. And they're like, Schaefer, you're in. I'm like, uh, what? That's <laughs> so, fantastic. So I run in there. And, uh, and I, that's game one? That's game one. It's a preseason game. Yeah. Man. Again, didn't expect to play. I mean, obviously, I wanted to play and hoped to play, but, you know, we were prepared that we are not going to see, see a single snap. So I run in there, and, um, you know, I play the rest of the game and, and end up doing okay. I mean, I felt like – I mean, these guys were monsters. I mean, I remember looking up like, holy smokes, these guys are big. And it, they had a big D-line and, you know, 330-pounders, 350-pounders. And, and you were how much and, at this point? Uh, I was I was 300 at yeah. that point. I mean, I was 300 at least. But, it, you know, just as a small rook, it, rookie, it was it was intimidating. And, uh, you know, finished the game and, and, you know, didn't think I did very good. But the coaches said, you know, you did really good. And, you know, we were really shocked how well you did. And I'm like, well, okay. So then game two comes around, and I'm the second string. And so the rest of the way through, you know, weeks two, three, and four, I'm the second string. No but, kidding. But technically, the, you know, there's they don't look at it as your second string because you're behind the right tackle. The, the way they look at it is, you know, you got two starting tackles, and then most teams only keep one more backup tackle. And then they will keep another guy on the practice squad. Mm-hmm. So really, you know, because there's 53 players, they keep seven or eight linemen. So you have your five starters, and then you got your backup tackle, mm-hmm. and then sometimes your backup guard and a backup center. Uh, but some teams keep just one player that does center and guard. So again, you got your five starters, one mm-hmm. backup tackle, and then one backup to the guard and center, to the two guards and center. And uh, because that's all you know, to have fifty three guys, you know, right. you got to you can't have one, you know, two at every position type thing with with kickers and extra quarterbacks and all that stuff. So. Um, yeah, so I'm still thinking, you know, I, you know, I, I remember talking to people and telling, you know, that my best hope is to make the practice squad. Yeah, you know, I, I want to be the number. I'm going to be the number four tackle, and uh, m- make the practice squad. And you know, every time I, I kind of befriended the Grim Reaper, and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. of course you did. Yeah, and I walked by him. I'm like, Are, is it me? He goes, No, shave. It's not you. It's not you, shave. Don't worry about it. And I mean, he he was. He gave me some, you know, motivation or, yeah. or, you know, helped me think that maybe it wasn't me. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, it, it goes from, you got, you know, 90 some players, then there's a cut down to 85 and then there's the bigger cut down yeah. to 65 after the, I think the second game, it goes to 65, um, or maybe after the third game, it goes to 65. So I made that, you know, I was still in the 65, 50, 53 guys, there's 12 guys that are going to get cut. And again, it was, you know. If I'm going to make the team, I'm going to make it as number 52 or 53, you know. And then, uh, then the final preseason game comes, and they the Grim Reaper sta- standing out there ready for us, and he does not take me. So I say, okay, well, shoot, I made it. That's so I was, awesome. so it was, it was a exciting time. But 
on the same sense, as a rookie, they can still cut you at any time right. and you don't get another penny. So, you know, they, they take your salary, divide it, divide it up by 17. There's 16 games plus a, a buy. So 17 weeks. So if you're on the on the roster on Wednesday, you get paid that week. If you're not, then you don't get paid that week. You don't get paid anymore. No kidding. Uh, with vet- veterans, they have – it's a little different, but with a rookie or a second-year guy, that that's how it is. So right. I remember uh, – my first year salary is two twenty five, and was that minimum? Yeah, minimum yeah. salary, and I, I divided it up, and I'm like two twenty five divided by seventeen is thirteen two thirty five, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna get ten, I'm gonna get like ten grand. This is awesome. <laughs> of course, my first paycheck was sixty seven hundred dollars. I'm like sixty seven hundred. That's like like exactly half. Yeah. Like, where's all the money at? So that's when I learned about uh, taxes. Taxes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, taxes. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, every but every week going every week going forward, I was I was like, man, you know, I, I'd always look at the roster and I say, okay, well, these two guys will probably get cut before me. Yeah. <laughs> so if if there's injuries, it, that's that's the problem. So you got 53 guys, but if a DB goes down, right, they have to go sign another DB, and right. they don't want to put them on IR because if you go on IR, you, you would at that time you're out the whole year, right. So uh, they want to keep, you know, the guy's going to be out three weeks. So we got to bring in another DB, and now we got to cut somebody. Yeah. So who are we going to cut? Let's cut the fourth tackle. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. It's a type deal. So, yeah, I was uh, – I actually – because there were some injuries, I guess, the very first game, I, I dressed the very first game. And um, it was in Green, in Green Bay. Uh, my very first game and my very last game were in Green Bay. And huh. I was on kickoff return, so it – they put me. Out, I was a pretty good kickoff returner. We did a wedge, and I would be inside the wedge. And uh, the the special teams coordinator was Dan Reeves' son-in-law, and he really liked me too for whatever reason. And so, um, so he put yeah, so he put me in the wedge, and I was the very first play of the game. I just remember standing there, seeing all the cheese heads, and just the. I, I would like desperately want to go to a game there. Actually. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's in Green Bay. You know, it'd be great in Atlanta, but yeah. just to see the. The history yeah. and, and you know the all the fans and right. how devoted they are. Yeah, I want to go awesome. there during a snowstorm. Yeah, uh, like for a game there, like it's serious and it's you know packed then yeah, too. Packed. I mean, it's unbelievable. Packed. You still got the cheese heads, you got the yeah. crazy people with no shirts on, and it's all over the place. It's it's exciting, but you know, I I, I often look back and um, I, I didn't tell this, but how you know I may, ended up making the team and. Um, there was one play I can almost, I mean, you know, obviously it's more than one play, but there's almost one play that I think may have helped me ma- uh, make the team. And it was, I was just at right tackle and it was um, like a counter play and, you know, not to get too technical, but I, the, I had a defensive end on my outside and I had to, I have to go inside and if he slants inside, I have to take him with me. Um, but if he doesn't, then I got to bounce back out and get the linebacker because the play is going to go outside of me. Mm-hmm. So I got to get inside, bounce out, and get the linebacker. And and I just I did it just like I thought I would. I went inside, he didn't follow me, so then I bounced back out, real athletic looking, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I blocked the linebacker. It was a great run. And and I remember Dan Reeves just talked about it. He's like, "Shave, this is a great job, great job, Kevin. This was a wonderful play." And <laughs> and I look back and I think that might have been the one play, yeah, that uh, helped me make the team. And th- and that's that's the funny thing about it is that you know as coaches, you know, obviously we care about how you perform and how you do in the long term but right. there's you know if, if one play sticks out to somebody i mean you have a chance to make the team yeah that's and, what changes the whole trajectory yeah right? i mean even yeah. in high school you have a chance to start if you have one magnificent play um you know a coach sees it and says wow that guy's got potential yeah let's let's keep him so second season you played in every game you got your start against new york yeah it was the eighth game of the year so um well to go back to my first year so it was um so I, I, I dressed that first game, okay. and I'm like, this is awesome. And then the next seven games, I'm uh, not dressing. Okay. So, so there's 53 guys on the roster, but only 45 can dress on game day. Sheesh. So the other guys still get paid the same, but they right. just they can't dress. So um, normally, again, you only dress the two starters and one backup. And uh, throughout the year, I you know I, I, I just kept working hard, and, and the number three guy was, you know, he was not doing quite as well, and – and I tell you, he had an opportunity. One of the the right tackle went down one game, and he went in, and I thought he had a great game. But there was one play that um, it was in pass protection where 
you know, we have the four down lineman and a certain linebacker, and we call it the weak side, the wheel linebacker. And it was to, to his side, the wheel linebacker was outside of him. So he has to keep his eyes on him. And uh, if he comes, he's got he's to block him. And, um, and you know, he might have been playing left. No, he was playing right tackle. And, uh, and, the, and this guy, blit, the weak side linebacker, blitzes and hits Vic right in the back of the head. Mm. And, um, and the tackle, he, he never looked out there, never saw him, just kind of locked on the defensive end. And because of that play, they made the move. They switched no him. No way. So they, they switched me to be the number three guy, and now he's the number four guy. And um, – and it just it's amazing again you know one play can make one a play. make a career one or one play it. can break a yeah. career it just again he might have scored a 99 but he one play he didn't do his job and and Vic got hit in the back of the wow. head and that's enough to to get out yeah so then yeah so then I was a backup and 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 I was always kind of jealous of there was a fourth round draft pick from Miami uh, a, a good friend of mine at the time and still a good friend of mine um he got it, you know the signing bonus. My signing bonus was twenty six thousand five hundred dollars mm. that year. His signing bonus was two hundred ninety five thousand. Okay, and he got the new Escalade and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, man, geez, I mean, we're not that different. And he gets so much more, and and so he's the backup to the both guards and center, and and now at this time I'm the backup to both tackles, and um, and I'm doing I'm doing pretty well. I, I keep I keep kind of my trajectory keeps going up. And um, and uh, we get to the like the the playoff game, and and one of the guards was pretty banged up, so uh, instead of putting him in you know into play, they actually moved me. They they wanted me to play tackle and guard. So now so now it was pretty awesome. I'm backed up to four positions, and wow. he's backed up just to center. So in that first year, I kind of was able to elevate myself at, at, to that point. So going, to, it was again an interesting story. So I. Uh, so I'm back backing up both tackles and both guards, but primarily one of the guards was pretty banged up. So I was really focused on that guard position, which I had never played guard in my life. Um, so it was, you know, a brand new thing for me, and you know, I had to get ready for it. And and we go up to Green Bay. That it's in Green Bay again, first round of the playoffs. Green Bay has never lost a home playoff game ever, and uh, we go up there and we beat them. Wow, <laughs> first time ever, and I got to go in and play that uh, left guard position for you know, about 10 plays towards the wow. end of the game. But it was it was pretty awesome. So that was my first time actually playing on the offensive line. I was – so the first – so like I said, that uh, when I ended up dressing again, so the first first game I dressed, next seven I did not, and then the rest of the year I, I started dressing. And um, and they put me on special teams. And my and I think uh, the special teams coordinator had a large part to do with that because he really liked me on special yeah. teams too. And yeah. He and like me in the wedge, and we had a couple returns, you know, kickoff returns, which are a lot of the really opportunities good. too are about personality as well. I mean, you got a great personality. Yeah. You're making friends with everybody you meet, you know. So you're making friends with the Grim Reaper. You're making friends yeah. with each of the coaches' positions. I mean, that goes a long way. Yeah, even even back to making friends with the the scout at yeah. the at the Falcons. I had no yeah. idea, you know, yeah. I had no idea Atlanta was interested, but just I think that helped. I've, so. I've been watching the combine closely. Nolan Smith. Uh, UGA, you know, yeah. super stud. Uh, he was one of my students at my last school oh, for a wow. long time. So, okay. so he's just a great kid. Like I'm just, I'm just so excited for him. Like you know, want him to succeed, and he's been killing it at the combine. Yeah. And, you know, so I mean, he's gonna he's gonna do some big things. But you know, when he was hurt this last season. Uh, I, lo- I just loved the, all the talk from the commentators that they were they were like, "Hey, Nolan's out there coaching again," you know, like like he was just he is he is so kind to everybody around him. It just played right. Like I mean, you're just he's making friends with everybody. He's out there chatting with chatting up yeah. with the, the kicker, chatting with, like just everybody, just helping wherever he can help. Yeah. You know, and that that personality is also it, like it drives a lot. You know, you're getting a lot of opportunities because of your personality. Yeah, and that that's interesting you say that because you know when. When college coaches call, I mean, I'm sorry, when NFL coaches call, I mean, they're not calling to say, ask up the head coach. And I mean, they'll call the head coach, call the off- offensive line coach, but they're not saying, you know, how does he do on the double team or where does he put his head? Where's his hand, hand placement? I mean, they're asking all about your character. Right. And asking what type of guy you are. They, right. they do not want to make an investment in a guy that is is not going right. to pass for him. Right, and it and, could end up in police trouble or anything yeah, and that, like that. And that's what's crazy is, you know, people are like, the NFL is a tough league and, t- you know, these players. But there's no criminals in the NFL. Because right. if you if you get caught doing anything, you yeah. get kicked out. That's I mean, right. You get 
you know, you, you lose a full year or you get expelled forever yeah. or but teams just don't pick you up. Right. Because and those guys don't want to take that and, chance. And it, it, they're putting so much investment into you that yeah. they cannot take that risk. That's right. And it's it's a clean league. You know, yeah. so, and not to say that, you know, guys aren't going to get a sure. trouble for, for still whatever. Guys, but yeah. but uh, for the most part, I mean, they're, that's where they're checking your character and what type of person you are. And, and, and having those relationships and talking to people, I mean, that's what really – Set you apart. Yeah. Take me to the, your first start. Yeah. So my first start. So um, my second year, you know, I, uh, so I'm the, ba- I'm the number three guy the whole year or the whole, you know, going forward. The left tackle uh, was a uh, first round draft pick. He was, uh, I think, sixth overall. I think in 1991, he started like 11, uh, 11 years, never missed a game. The right tackle was a guy that we got from, um, Seattle gave a big contract to the you know my my rookie year both good friends of mine and um, you know really had no hope of getting in there cracking the lineup unless there was an injury um, so the first you know we're in our eighth game playing Philadelphia and the left tackle he goes down and breaks mm. his ankle oh my gosh uh, so immediately I I run in there and they kind of joked that like I'm in there like jumping around on the field while he's still laying on the ground and, <laughs> and I'm like well, so they told me to go in I had to go in. <laughs> So yeah, it's in Philly. So I, uh, so I run in there as a start as a, I'm now the starter, and I and I know that I'm probably going to be the starter for a for while. This, yeah. So um, yeah, so I'm starting there, left tackle, and and I play the rest of the game, do pretty good. Um, next game comes around, do pretty good, and and um, I remember my, my offense line coach. I mean, he always joked around. He's like, man, I I'm gonna I got to become your agent. You know, I need. You know, he, he he saw that, you know, a left tackle position is, is a tough position and and you're always going against the best defensive end, you know, because they they put the right defensive end typically is the best player and um and just, you know, I, I felt like I was doing okay. I mean, I didn't feel like I was dominating, mm-hmm. um, but I felt like I was I was getting it done and I ended up giving up uh, I think one um one and a third sack that year for eight games, which is pretty good That's pretty for good. a left tackle. Yeah. Um I remember I was playing. We were getting ready to play uh, the Colts with Dwight Freeney, and and uh, yeah, my offense line coach is like, "If you shut this guy down, I will quit and become your agent." <laughs> and I uh, ended up doing really well in that game too. <laughs> Didn't have any sacks on me, and and did well. And um, yeah, so through you know through the second year, had a good second year. Third year comes around, I I start every game. And now second year, you get a real contract. No, I never you did. Still don't. Still don't. No, yep, kidding. still don't. They still in my rookie contract. It's, 225, 300, 380 are the three no kidding. three years, my 26 five signing bonus. And and then um, every team has rights to you for four years, um, but you only sign typically you only sign a three year deal. Okay. So that fourth year you're you're called a restricted free agent, where you are a free agent because you don't have a contract, but you're you're re- restricted to the team if they want you. Um, so then they have to give you a, uh, an offer, and there's a low offer or a high offer. Like if you're not a starter, they'll give you the low offer, which is like 500. I mean, it's good. And then the higher offer was 1.47. And um, we expected that they would give me the higher offer, and they did. Mm-hmm. So it was good. So I ended up. Uh, uh, and that was for your fourth year or for that, your third year? Just my fourth year, okay. yeah. So I finished my third year and then go to my fourth year. And, um, and I tell you, I, I was always one of those guys that – would push push a guy over the pile and uh, you know kind of finish the play and mm-hmm. finish the guy to the ground and and there was one play my my fourth year and in you know again it's you call it your contract year because that now you, you'll be an un, unrestricted free agent where you can sign with anyone um, so yeah my it, there was one play I was uh, work, work done was running behind me and I was blocking Jason Taylor. And uh, he gets tackled, like, right behind me. And I, I start kind of falling backwards over the pile. And Jason Taylor, he grabbed my arm. He's like, shave, shave, be careful, be careful. And he pulled me, pulled me. And I was like, holy smokes. And that kind of changed my perspective forever that, you know, this is a, a just a, a good boy league. I mean, these yeah. are just guys that care about each other, that we all go out and do a job. And, I mean, 10 times out of 10, I would have, it, had it been reversed, I would have pushed him over the pile. Yeah. You know, and, and but for him to grab me and pull me and, course then i started thinking you know i might be playing with him next year too so i gotta yeah. be a little careful so uh but that kind of changed my perspective there was like two different play two different plays but that was the one that really stuck out that he, he grabbed me That's and saved wild. me from potential injury yeah and uh you love hearing so. that perspective on it because you just don't hear about that about the nfl a whole lot yeah no you don't i mean it's it's a 
I uh, one year I was I was voted. I don't know. It was by some weird, you know, um, radio station or something. But I was voted the dirtiest player in the NFL. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah, we we got this offensive line coach who was he was all about cutting guys and and everything and um and uh and we would so we try to cut everybody on the backside and and you know cut them down and. And I was real big with that. We'd run to the right a lot, and I'd be chasing somebody and go cut them. And um, so, yeah, so I was voted dirtiest player wow. in the NFL. There's was one play I, I remember. I, you know, the NFL would give you fines. And sometimes, I earlier on, we were playing Baltimore, and I went down to cut a guy, and I rolled. You know, you kind of cut and roll, mm -hmm. like throw your head and shoulders at him, and then roll over. And if your leg comes up and hits the guy above the knee, they call it a leg whip. So um, I ended up doing that. I, I cut him, and kind of my leg just kind of naturally went up and hit him kind of in the quad. And Wednesday morning, I get a FedEx letter. It's a fine from the NFL, $5,000 fine. No way. I'm like this. Are you kidding me? And so I, I appeal it, and I lose the appeal. You know, I tell him it's just a natural move. I mean, I, my, my leg just goes. I do it a million times. and. Yeah, but no, I, I lose the appeal, and they fine me $5,000. Wow. So then a little bit later um, – in the season, um, we do we we did a play a lot that we would kind of fake the run to the right, and then Michael Vick would keep it to the left. And what we were taught is instead of going down to cut the guy, there'd be a guy inside of me, and normally he'd be the guy that I would be chasing to cut. And it happened to be Warren Sapp this time. And so and so if if it's a a play where he's going to fake to the right and then keep it to the left, we would stay up and we would just push the guy. And we would wait for him to turn around and come back, and we'd go cut him. You know, kind of a, a dirty move that now is illegal. Yeah. You know, rightfully so, because it does create injuries. But so so I ran down, and I made it look like I was trying to cut him off. Then I pushed him along, and then I kind of stand there, just kind of wait, wait, wait. As soon as he turns around, I go down to cut him. But in this, and I did that, you know, countless times, and it was great. The guy would fall over. It'd be awesome. <laughs> um, but this particular play, I weren't sappy turns around so I go to go down to cut him and then right when he turned around he, he turned back so I ended up cutting him right in the back of the leg oh. completely illegal and he goes down he, he's out he goes out the game and I'm just thinking holy smokes this is if I got find five grand for a leg whip this is going to be a horrible yeah awful so anyway I, I so Wednesday morning I know I 100% know I'm getting the fine so I open the letter and it's $2,500 I'm like twenty five hundred. I will gladly pay that. <laughs> I will not appeal. I will, I will laugh all the way to the bank and yeah. pay that one. So wow. So it was great. I don't know why they did that. I don't know if you know Warren Sapp was a louder guy. I don't know what it was, but I was very happy That's <laughs> to right. pay that one. Now, now, why do you so so when you swap from the Falcons to the Cleveland Browns? Tell me about that transition. Why does that take place? Yeah. So uh, after your fourth year, you become an unrestricted free agent, right. and um, it was it was kind of a. Um, there was an NFL, um, uh, I don't, I guess it was a lockout or not a lockout, but there was a every so many years you sign a new collective bargaining agreement between the owners and the players, and this was the year that it was up. So they were trying to negotiate a collective bargaining agreement, and it it was kind of being known that if they don't renegotiate, I I think that there was a few more years left, but they were trying to get it done early. Um, but if they don't renegotiate, then most teams are going to be very, very tight on the cap. Oh, okay. Every team has a, a maximum they can spend. And if they do, um, you know, finalize the deal, then um, there'll be a lot of extra money and, and things will be great. So my agent's kind of warning. He's kind of preparing me. Like I, he's expecting me to get a nice, good contract. But if there's no new collective bargaining agreement, there's no money. Um, he and And there was a time that, you know, we, we weren't sure if we could, if there was going to be one. And he's like, well, you can go up and do, you know, I have set uh, in New York, Jet, New York Jets. I have a two year, $2 million deal that you can go up there, which is less than I made the year before. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, that's horrible. Um, but then I, I just remember just, I mean, I pray, I'm just praying that God would um, work out that deal. <laughs> it was a big deal, but just praying that everything would work out. And I just had this peace over me that it was going to be worked out. Mm -hmm. Things were going to happen. And again, this was a much bigger prayer than, um, than having a safe game or whatever. I mean, there was a huge collective bargaining agreement, and, and they free agency starts like there's a you, you're not allowed to talk to any team until um, like Mar like March fifteenth or whatever. Whenever free, I think it was Mar I think it was March second, which happens to be my birthday, 
was when it spo- was supposed to start, and but they they delayed it a week because they were still negotiating. They, they delayed it delayed it like two more weeks, and um, and um, and then and then I I just remember this piece that God was going to take care of it, and, and sure enough, they worked out a deal, and there was plenty of extra money, and and things were great. So that that day um, at like midnight, free agency starts. And, you know, we, we expect to hear something quickly, not necessarily, you know, right away, but, um, you know, my wife and I were married at the time. I met her, um, uh, I met Tara my first year in, in Atlanta. She I was going to ask, when, did, when yeah. did Tara come into the scene? She worked at O'Charlie's, and I would go in there with our fullback, Bob Christian, and um, Bob was another good Christian guy. Last name's Christian. I guess yeah. he had to be a Christian. <laughs> but it's a real good, but he was our fullback and real, real nice guy. I just hung out with them quite a bit, and... We went into old Charlie's and, I, and she was a she was a server there and met her and immediately had an attraction and and uh, you know she says I chased her and I did chase her <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah so we um, we ended up getting together that year and then the next year we got engaged and then my third year we got married huh. uh, down in Jekyll Island that's awesome and um, kind of down down there and and um, yeah so you know we're laying in bed and and my agent calls me at like two thirty in the morning and oh he, my gosh. He tells me, Kevin, I got a deal. It's in uh, Cleveland. And he tells me how much it is. And I said, okay. He's like, you got to go tomorrow. And I said, okay. And so I, I, I wake her up. And I said, babe, we're going to Cleveland. She goes, Cleveland? I don't want to go to Cleveland. <laughs> I said, how about for $36 million? She said, let's go to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, yes, yeah, so we went to Cleveland. And we ended up signing the deal. And um and it was great, you know. It was it was a seven year, thirty six million dollar deal, yeah. and so much signing bonus. And yeah. it was it was great, but it, but um, so I'm there three years, and and you know we don't really do very well. And my my second year, we went ten and six, coincidentally, and it was like the best year they've ever had. And, oh wow! And um, but we did not make the playoffs. It was interesting. We were ten and six and did not make the playoffs, which is a very odd thing to do, to go 10 to 6 not make the playoffs but it kind of got down to the very uh, very last game I remember the uh Colts were playing the Titans and of course we're thinking of course the Colts are going to win they got Peyton Manning well they already clinched so Peyton Manning doesn't doesn't play <laughs> so he's he's not playing so if the Titans win they go to the playoffs over us and if the Colts win then we go to the playoffs and sure enough Peyton Manning doesn't start and it's a close game but Titans ended up winning Excuse me. So, um, so we don't go to the playoffs. So yeah. So then, uh, so at, yeah. After the third year, um, uh, all, all the 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 head coach and the general manager who brought me in, they both got fired. So, um, so then, you know, I I thought, oh, this may not be good. You know, because now <laughs> my fourth year, the salaries go up every year, and I'm thinking this may not be good for me. And uh, we go, we had a house in Florida, so we went down to our Florida house, and and uh, and we stay down there, and and. Um, free and we're supposed to come back, you know, like March fifteenth, I think was the date, and uh, and they hire a new coach, and he's a tough, he's a tough coach. I mean, he's hard, and um, about my, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so about a week before we're supposed to report, it, we get a phone call from them, and they say, well, they they need, they want to try to lower the contract, um, they want to just do one more, cut off the last two years and just do one more year, cut off the last three years, do one more year and lower the amount. And, uh, and so we're, we're negotiating, we're talking back and forth and we ended up just not making a deal. So they ended up releasing me. So then I become a free agent again. So, uh, then I, and then you go to Chicago. Yeah. Then I go to Chicago. So Chicago. So th- th- this time, I, I mean, I wasn't as highly coveted cause I was an older player. And so now, um, it, it I waited around a couple of weeks and then, Chicago calls and, and they want to work a deal. So end up going there for a three-year deal. I signed a three-year deal and I, and I kind of went in and um, when I went in, you know, there was a, you know, I, I didn't know if I was going to start or, or be back up. And, and then they go out and they, they made the trade for Jay Cutler and then they got Orlando Pace and mm. left tackle. And uh, so I, you know, I, I'm like, well, he's, he's starting clearly, you know, he's like a 12 time all pro. Right. And, and uh, yeah, so I get up there in Chicago, and in, in I don't start the first half of the year. Orlando goes down, and then I start the rest of the year, and um, and then my ninth year comes around, and I got a new offensive line coach, the guy that that kind of brought me in. I really liked him, and then he got he got fired, and a new guy came in, and and um, 
and I, I played, so I started some, then it started something. He kind of brought his own guys in and, and, uh, but great experience though. Enjoyed it. And then, so after my second year, they released me after my second year and, and I had another opportunity. They, my agent called and this is the year of the lockout, the NFL lockout. Yeah. And it's kind of an expanded lockout time. And, um, I knew, I knew that, um, you know, that it was going to get delayed and all. So I, I went, we, we just built a house here in, in, in Atlanta and Chateau Lawn and, and, um, and we moved in and we were there and I didn't do anything football related. So we actually, that year we went to the NFC championship and played in green Bay that very last game. And we lost going to the Super Bowl. We lost. And, um, and so we, we just went, we went to Atlanta, we moved in it's, and, uh, didn't do anything. And then I get a phone call from my agent and he says, Hey, um, St. Louis, St. Louis Rams at the time, St. Louis wants to, fly you out there and I was like okay well when and he's like you know in like two days and so I went out on the golf course I ran around a little bit and and my and my knees both knees were pretty bad at that point mm-hmm. bothering me and so I said man Alan I, I had a good run but I think I'm done no okay. kidding so so yeah I mean so I kind of got to go out on my own which was good yeah that's you know, awesome. a lot of guys you know they they get forced out right <laughs> you know but right. I right in hindsight, I kind of wish I would have done another year or two. But <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're but, into your highlight of your coaching career, uh, you know, coaching Pee Wee <laughs> baseball and middle school football, and and helping with high school football yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, tell me a little bit about that because I, I, I frankly, we're blessed with a lot of really, really talented guys. We've got a lot of NFL guys who are coaching with us, and so tell us a little bit about about that connection and how you also get to be with your kids, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I. I, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I retired in 2011. So, um, you know, for a couple of years, I, you know, we, we had always wanted a Christian school for our kids and we actually were enrolled at one over in like in Gainesville or, or Oakwood. And, and, um, we enrolled our daughter. We had a, a daughter and a son at that time and enrolled her into it. And, uh, they called us in the summer and they said, look, there's only two kids in kindergarten this year enrolled your daughter Ava is one of them so we're we're going to cancel the program so we're like oh well, what are we going to do now it's like July so um I said I think there's a school somewhere like in Decula or something and so we checked it out we found Hebron and went on a tour we loved it loved the tour and um and I told the guy I said you know I wouldn't mind help coaching football a little bit and they're like okay yeah well let's do it so so I come in and uh, I'm volunteer coaching for two years and and then uh, some stuff had happened and I was kind of like you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay on I'm gonna let go and and uh, a couple months later they call me they're like Shafe where you at and I said well I'm I'm not coaching this year and they, and they're like well can we ask you why and I was like well I mean you asked me so I'll tell you so I told them why and they said well we're thinking of making a coaching change and we've been talking about it and would you do it? And I said, no, I'm retired. I'm not, not going to do that. And he goes, well, do you know somebody? I said, you know what? I do know a guy, another guy that played with me in Atlanta, had a longer career than I. So, and he had kind of been around Hebron some, he had come around those two years with me. Uh, so I called him and, and he's like, Shave, why would you not do it? And I said, because I'm retired. You know, why would I do it? And then my wife, she's like, Kevin, you know, you've been praying about a vision for your life. And I had been in this group at 12. So this J men group yeah. d- during this year, and I've been praying for my, my life and what, what to do next. And, and she's like, Kevin, why would you not do it? I mean, why would you, it, it, I mean, you, you got a kid there. I mean, why would you not take it? And I said, okay, well, let me devote it to prayer. So I did, I devoted to prayer for about three days. And I finally felt like God was saying like, why would you allow somebody else to take a job that you're perfectly capable of doing? So I said, okay. So I did it for four years. That's and, awesome. And um, it was a good run. And I and at the time, I did not, I because I only went to college for four years, I did not have a degree. Mm-hmm. I was like three classes short. So the headmaster, he was like, well, we can't really put you in the classroom, so we'll put you in charge of fundraising. You know, just go raise. He, he set goals um, for every right. year. And, of course, I, I, you know, blew the goals out, yeah. out of the water. So it, it went really well, and that's so I, that's kind of how I started at Hebron. That's awesome. Back then in 2013. Awesome. Well, you're you're. I mean, listen, you're you're just one of the most faithful guys I've ever met. Uh, I, I love that that faith is very important to you. Uh, I frankly love the fact that that you know you come at it from a pretty conservative perspective, which I which I really appreciate. I also love the fact that I mean you're a funny guy. So we're, we you know every time we go out for meetings, we're always joking because we. 
We never know what you're going to say. We never know what you're yeah. going to do. Uh, but it's, I mean, it, it, it just, it keeps things pretty, pretty active. And, uh, and just impacting the kids around here. Uh, is is such a big thing, you know, uh, going around and lifting the little guys up, and and uh, and they're kind of pretty captivated by your size and and you know just your NFL background, but just your faithfulness here is huge. You're making a huge impact here on campus. Uh, you just helped close out this big project that we did with the theater and the dining hall. We're excited about where God is taking us uh, with a brand new special needs school, servicing a brand new. Uh, a kid, you know, type of kid here at Hebron, and we're excited about what God's doing there. Uh, man, it's just a pleasure to be able to work with you each and every day, uh, and just being able to watch God work around us. Yeah, it, it's it's really awesome to see it. Uh, you know, it's it's humbling to see the amount of money that people will, will give, and and I believe it's about relationships. I believe right. people give to people, not to right. things, and and um, you know, it's just working relationships and talking to people, and it's all from the Hebron family. That's right. I mean, it's all from parents and grandparents pretty yeah. much 100 percent of yeah. you know giving is from that and i know when you came in and you said uh you know you had just gotten hired and you came in to, to the, uh, my boss karen standridge and you said uh you know we need to build an expansion to the elementary school and it's 2.8 million and karen and i are like mm, that's not gonna happen <laughs> <You> know, <'cause laughs> we know there's a you know there's been great giving but not necessarily to that right that range because you said it it was. Um, we need to do it like four months. Yeah, it was September, and yeah. you said we need it by December. Yeah, I was like, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you yeah, know? And, and sure enough, yeah, the Lord God, provided. God, God provided, yeah. and uh, we had an anchor giver that just yeah. get, ended up giving a million dollars, and just yeah. somebody that loves that they they say they work to give. And right, it's been awesome to see the fam some of the families that have stepped up, especially yeah. just throughout the last ten years that they start low. You know, sometimes they start um, low, and they just kind of rise and, and their business thrives yeah. and they do well and their the business just takes off and it's amazing yeah. to see how faithful they are. Yeah, just to see it. So it's yeah. awesome to see God working here. We're excited about where he's going in the future. And again, Kevin, thank you for jumping on the show today. Uh, it's exciting to watch God doing things. We're excited where he takes us to the next chapter. You're welcome. I still got a lot of stories. I didn't get to get into any of them, but maybe another time. Another we'll time. Another I know that one, particularly yeah. all of our guys on production side, they want to hear the stories. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Kevin. I appreciate it. All right.